Welcome everyone, we are the Grin Brothers and we're continuing our playthrough of Fallout 4's DLC. Yeah, last time I checked I think we were going to do the police quest? We're uh, set on blood oh, tie. Well, let's just kill the trapper leader. Wait, trapper leader? Yeah. Well, let's it's the last of um, Dalton's quest. Oh, we can we can do that. And, and then we've got Hull Breach 2. Um, and and Rite of Passage. Yeah, and there's also the policeman. Police, you know, the police robot. Uh, uh, yes, you which know. is... Not set as a quest yet. Oh, weird. But I can find it. I okay. know where it is. It's... Duh. Okay, Cliff Edge Duh. Okie dokie. Uh, I'll place a marker there. Highlight that and highlight that. Yeah, so which, whichever you want to do first, just uh, go ahead with it. CMS um, area. Of course, our main thing is currently trying to get... Uh... Oh, that's the trappers. I forgot this was part of the map. <laughs> our uh, you can go new companions uh, oh friendship God. up. Because we at least want to get it to the point where... Um, if we do a few things he dislikes, it won't. Yeah, because I, I don't know how he reacts to that. Yeah. The... I mean, you might be. Well, he, we were able to get some money out of it, weren't we? Yeah. So, as long as we just. Uh... Be an asshole. <laughs> right. And heck, he respected very nicely to us um, honouring the dead guy. So, there are good things about Longfellow. That's his name? Yes. Oh, yeah, Longfellow's cool. I like him. Um, he's, he's like the. He likes um... money a lot. <laughs> The best way to describe him is... Oh, gosh. The game is not like that. How dare you try to play us? He's... With a lack of gentler ways to put it, he's kind of like a northern friend. Yeah. They're, they're kind of like a douche, but they're your douche. <laughs> like, they speak very... Like Guy Gardner. <laughs> bluntly towards people. Have a very... Crass outwardly way Outwardly of... hostile... Yeah. Um, air about them. But they're kind of cool when you get to know them. Mm. Still a bit of a douche. But Usually when, you know, they've got a beer in their hand, but... A, the vicious wolf disconnected the controller. See, that doesn't happen with the Duke, you know? Yeah, that's good to hear, and I don't care. <laughs> well, I was going to bring up something else, but you know what? I'm going to roll on to that. So... For my birthday, I got the Xbox Duke controller. Yes, uh, made by Hyperkin. One, yes, and it's fantastic. I'm glad you like it. I was worried. It's a little because... bit light, admittedly. Yeah. But I think uh, the comfort of how it fits in the hand uh, is still a lot better than just its uh, general lightweight. I mean, I would appreciate a bit of more weight to it, but the, just the way it nicely fits into my hand... Uh, is appreciated. I thought the buns would be end up being weird, but surprisingly, they you know it felt very natural moving into A and B. I've been playing just Sonic Mania with it, as clearly Sonic Mania was intended to be only played with the Xbox original Xbox Duke controller. You know, it's as Sonic was always meant for. You know, um, how you find the uh, is it the bumpers? Yeah, it's the bumpers. Well, Sonic Mania doesn't use the bumpers at all. Oh, that's good. I can say that weirdly enough, I have been enjoying using the D-pad. Of the Xbox Duke controller. It has surprisingly been very helpful doing the Sphere games. Also, I regret to inform everyone that we will not be doing a playthrough of Sonic Mania on the Grim Brothers channel because I think Raph was starting to die watching me play the Sphere Grid mini game. Yeah, for whatever. I think it's because it's like um, running at actual frames. Mm. Like it, it was really smooth, but Buttery. as a result. Uh, it really does feel like, what if Sonic actually had a game out on the Sega Saturn? Like, pe people are like, oh, it's like the Sonic 4 on the Mega Drive. No, no, the Mega Drive couldn't pull off a lot of the things it's doing here. This is Sega Saturn. Oh, yeah. Maybe Sega CD could have done a little bit of some of it, but I think, with, in general, it's more of the Sega Saturn. Even the, the UFO mini games, for instance, um, <sighs> it, it feels more like the Sega Saturn Sonic visually that they had in Sonic... Flicky Island, mm. where in for the Sega Sandport they actually made a completely new mini game thing uh, based off uh, what what data uh, files they basically had left over from Sonic Extremes cancellation. Um, oh, trappers, we found them. So they had uh, so they used that sort of programming for the mini game things, and it, re and it looked really cool and everything. 
they also didn't want to have to worry about you know moving Sonic in 3D because it was yeah. like a it was just a running forward sort of thing. I wonder if I can just oh oh the trap oh, the trappers are just people. Um, did you see that weird? Yes. Cool. Just people wearing fishbowl heads. Yeah, they're crazy people. Oh, okay. I thought, oh, I thought that was two different groups. Okay. No, the fog has made them. I thought the trappers were just loopy. like the raiders of this area. Yeah, they are. Basically. Yeah, but raiders aren't insane. Stupid, but not insane. Yeah, but these guys have gone crazy due to air. There's also a lot of them. Like, mm. Jesus Christ. It's a good thing I got a baseball bat. So that tends to help. With, you know... It's a good I, thing I can take on these guys with guns, because I've got a baseball bat. Admittedly, it does have a buzzsaw and a rocket <laughs> strap to it, but... Why were you shooting the floor, buddy? I think he was trying to shoot a uh, long, long fella. Why? Longfellow's invincible. What's the point of trying to shoot him? Yeah, it really is just, like... Do you think they know? Mm. Well, that's a surprising amount of blood from my finger now. Oh. That's basically been my life over... Uh, well, just my life in general. It's, oh, I'm bleeding. Yeah, I must admit, I've been I've uh, also got an electric toothbrush for my birthday. Um, I'm surprised, like, last night I cleaned my teeth and I, I just... Oh, I wasn't quite sure I had because, you know, I spat back out and there was no blood. You know, it's like, that's unusual. Acid. Glad they just had that. Yeah, I bleed a lot. From the everything. Really. <laughs> Rafi is actually just one very big red cell. Okay. <laughs> Ain't having any of that. How dare you bre break my head? I'll fix it up by jabbing a needle into my... Arm or chest? Ha, huh, joke's on you, I can teleport. Also use the psychic powers, me? also use the psychic strike of that bow. Oh, that's really good, I might actually need that. Oh, Ooh, this wobbles way oh. too much. Let's turn the light on. There you go, over there. Hello, Bilge. Oh, goodbye Bilge. Oh, okay. Um, Why am I moving? Didn't realise it was going to be a named opponent. I guess he's the leader of the trappers then. Oh, I'm over encumbered. That's unsurprising. It was that acid, you know. Oh wow, he's gone better. The more power arm you take. Wow. <laughs> uh, Did he just pop out of a fighting game or something? It's whenever they start meleeing me, I can't fight because I <laughs> have to block. Yeah, that's that. That's what happens. You hit them in the sort of rib cage, and their feet fall out from under them. Yeah, that's how it happens. Stop meleeing! It's cheating. It's hilarious how poor you're at melee, given you know our this Fallout Four has been a a hundred plus series, and we have been meleeing the entire time. Well, in my defence, pretty sure I don't need any of that. Uh, in my defence. I have played three Fallout games pretty much the exact same way every time, which is Explosives and lasers. throw dynamite and shoot them with lasers. As I said before, you can't call throwing dynamite a martial art. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, uh, the I'm Xbox. Crying for some reason. Yeah, the Xbox. I stop leaking. Yeah, the control stick works surprising well. Sometimes it's a little bit awkward in playing Sonic Mania in um, trying to do the spin attack, or rather, doing the spin attack when I didn't mean to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, the A and B buttons, it feels surprisingly comfortable moving my hand up to them, despite how they're, as you can see, well, as Rafi can see here, they're not the same, they're not an exact, you know, triangle, you know, or sort of no. diamond shape. They're angled, so it's not actually the same position as you would normally press them. But yeah, um, been really nice. And Sonic Mania has been a lot of fun as well. Um... Really fantastic game. I feel that, weirdly enough, the one thing that kind of holds it back, weirdly enough, is nostalgia. In the... There's quite a lot of levels. They do some cool things with it, but a lot of the levels are based off older games. Like, of course, you start off in Green Hill Zone. Um, Can you... Is it possible to have a Sonic game without Green Hill Zone? There used to be. Sonic Adventure had oh, nothing referencing it whatsoever. What and then Sonic Event and Sonic Adventure Two only had it as a little bonus treat. Yeah. Um, Wait, it was in Sonic Adventure Two. Yes, once you got every single S emblem. Oh. Well, Sonic Adventure had the reward being that you got a male Sonic skin for Sonic. 
if you got every emblem. Kind of. Sonic Adventure says. Two was you got to play Green Hill Zone as either Sonic or Shadow. That's cool. Um, Come back here. And it was an almost it, like they obviously had to change some things to accommodate for the free game in play, but it was like an almost a com the exact accommodation of a Green Hill Zone is in 3D. Should shoot people more often. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> like for instance, the first level is Green Hill Zone. Then second level, you get uh, um, you get to um, the uh, that chemical plant zone from Sonic Two. You know the ones with all the blue stuff. Yeah. Um, later on, you get the cave from uh, you get the sort of volcanic cave and the crystal cave from Sonic Three. You get the um, like I, I think there's uh, I think speed the speed starway is actually from Sonic CD because you actually when you go to Act Two you actually pass by a future sign. Yeah. It's, um, it's um Metal Sonic stage, isn't it? Yeah, you actually fight Metal Sonic at the end of it. Yeah. And they do the exact same sort of boss battle for him. See but, the fog. It has you. Well, kind of. And then they and they actually they actually actually fight different variations of Metal Sonic. You first fight you first do a running session against Metal Sonic like Sonic CD. Then you fight against Silver Sonic from Sonic Two. Yeah, exactly. And each time you hit Silver Sonic, it hurts Metal Sonic. And then Metal Sonic, you do another chase sequence. And then Eggman gives Metal Sonic the Phantom Ruby, so Metal Sonic turns into the giant Metalix Sonic. Who the hell is Silver Sonic from Sonic the Hedgehog Two? He's just the oh, is it the the final boss of Sonic Two sort of thing? You know the sort of oh, the metallic Sonic before Metal Sonic. I think I know what one you mean. You know, Metal Sonic has like a cannon on his chest, and such. this one was just like a big spiky Sonic, effectively, entirely silver. Yeah, it's kind of ironic that Sonic CD and Sonic Two were both made at the same time, both different directions for how a successor to Sonic the Hedgehog would work, and both conveniently had a Metal Sonic. In it, and then this is kind of weird. Then the whereas Sonic the Hedgehog two became the Sonic formula going onwards, rather than Sonic CD, Sonic uh, Metal Sonic from Sonic CD, which people would have less likely played, ended up being the Metal Sonic they went with. Yeah. Um, relentless Trapper, so he runs. Not very relentless, is he? Definitely not very relentless. Oh, it's on fella. Oh. <laughs> that was that was a close call there. It's fine, he's immortal. Um And um there's lots of cool things they do, but there's not many new stages. Um I wasn't a big fan of the studio stage. Um and the studio stage they was, they had some unique enemies in it, but it felt, I guess it felt a bit too much like a Casinoopolis type stage. Yeah. So it didn't really feel as unique on its own. Um, Mirage Saloon. Mirage, um, this is kind of cool. Mirage they Saloon. They candles on their pool table. Mirage Saloon was a lot of fun. Uh, they had, like, the second, uh, the first part was, like, uh, a really cool sequence I wish they did more of. You had both an airplane sequence and a train sequence all in one stage. Oh. It was also the easiest power ring to find. Even though I died trying to get to it. Okay. Um, um, but you do like an air sequence, um, then you do a tr small train sequence, which I kind of wish there was more of it, and then you do another air sequence against a sort of mini boss, and then you get to the Mirage stage itself, which is actually where they actually do have pinball flippers, but it doesn't feel, weirdly enough, the Studioopolis doesn't have the pinball flippers of, say, Casinoopolis. But it feels stages. more like Casinoopolis. Yeah, than the stage which actually does have pinball flippers. Um, and then there's a boss battle. The uh, Magician Egg Robot is always going to be the best one, because uh, I think, for just about most people, because his fight is he transforms into Fang, Bean, and Bark. Oh, that's cool. Um, and you have to fight Fang, Bean, and Bark. And the whole of the Mirage stage is filled with wanted posters for Fang, Bean, and Bark. Um, so, fantastic references to them. Um, yeah, lots of cool stage transitions. Um, I can definitely say what is my least favourite stage. Yeah. Because it does a unique thing to it. Well, you remember the... But it's kind of terrible because they did that. You know the oil stage... Um, from Sonic the Hedgehog 2 towards the end, the one where there's a lot of oil for you to sink into. Yeah. Um, 
Well, the first part of it's perfectly fine. They also have a cool sort of mechanic where if you have the fire shield, you set all the oil on fire. Oh. Um, which is really cool. However, the second part of it fills, the, weird fills the whole area damage. with gas. Okay. Which obscures the screen a lot, because it's very thick. And you have to occasionally pr uh, pull on levers to release, you know, open the sort of shutters and, like, release the gas. Because otherwise your rings slowly trickle down. Okay. And it doesn't really work well. Like, Sonic Mania does have part of my concern with it, but not as bad. It... You can definitely tell that Christian Whitehead likes Sonic CD. Yeah. Because some of the stages, uh, a lot of the stages are very open. They're not as bad as Sonic CD, mainly because there's no future pass mechanic to worry about. Yeah. Um, but, and a lot of times they kind of veer more to Sonic Hedgehog 3, where they have freedom, but there's, and, Can you know, the, the way they, the way they work. clearly, it feels like there's areas which are clearly set up for, oh, this is where you go if you're tailed, or, oh, this is Sonic and Mighty sort of esque route. Okay, I can. Um, Long Fire Cabin's becoming a dumping ground. I'm, uh, of course, I'm, my favourite character in the Sonic series is Tails, so um, I'm playing as Tails for it, but... Which is the easy mode, yes, but... My favourite is Amy Rose. And she, despite her being planned in the original Sonic Mania, she isn't even in the Plus version. She did have a very cute OVA, though. Well, ep episode, final episode to the Sonic Mania shorts they were doing. Which, in thought, which a lot of people were like, oh, they're teasing her for the uh, Sonic Mania Plus then, maybe as an update, but no, nothing happened to that. Do you... Don't think there's going to be up further expansions of Sonic Mania as well because Christian Whitehead's uh, since set up his own company now. Do people um? Do people not talk about Sonic Advance? No, people don't seem. Uh, that's it's weird because everyone who does talk about Sonic Advance praises Sonic Advance. Sonic... But you have to find the people who talk about Sonic Advance, which is They're that really weird. Good games. It's that weird forgotten period of Sonic. Some of the best. Like, those were the first 2D Sonic games I really enjoyed. Mm. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Sonic Hedgehog 3, so... But I, I did enjoy Sonic Advance. There's a, It's kind of interesting, Sonic Advance series, having played Sonic Advance 2... Um, it, it's a weird progression to the Sonic Rush and the Rush Boost formula. Like, you <laughs> can tell that they were slowly going into the boost formula with the Sonic Advance to... Sonic Rush, and then eventually Sonic Unleashed, where they embrace the concept of the boost formula, which I'm not a fan of, but yeah, <clears throat> it's a slow progression. I kind of feel Sonic Advance 2 feels better engine-wise and mechanically, but I feel the level design is better in Sonic Advance 1. Sonic Advance 2 feels smoother as you move and everything. But a lot of its levels are designed around running forward. Yeah. And then, they unfortunately, one of the levels has tons of pitch to it. So it's like, your your design philosophy for it has now just been broken. Like, every final boss, every boss battle in the Sonic Advance 2, I believe, uh, is a running boss. Yeah. Um, which is a shame, because I preferred the variety of the Sonic Advance 1 obviously offered. You know, a running you know, boss for one opponent, sure, fine, but not all of them. Um, but like... Sonic Advance 2 could have been the better game. It's just level design isn't as good because it's all f a lot of it's focused on that running mechanic. You know, what, you know, embracing the running thing. Whereas Sonic Advance 1 has a lot more old school Sonic design philosophy. Um, which is kind of weird that you're not huge on the older Sonic games because Sonic Advance actually is you know a refinement of a lot of them. Yeah. Um, in a lot of ways. Um, Amy's definitely the slower paced character, but out of all of them, but it does also give, um, which gives some, I think, has helped change some of the level aspects to bet to suit it so that you can take a slower approach better. Yeah, uh, I'd say Sonic Advance probably contains more to Sonic the Hedgehog Three formula. Uh, well, actually, Sonic and Knuckles had a lot of sort of vertical movement, although I'm mostly remembering the mushroom stage here. Um, my, um, biggest thing with, because, like, I did enjoy Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles, um, but it's, I enjoyed, like, multiplayer of mm. it. Yeah. Single player, I just didn't really get into it. Fair enough. 
I don't know. It's weird. Like, I can tell they're good games, but I just don't enjoy them that much. Well, that to me, that's why the Sonic games were always better than the Mario games, you know, 2D ones, because Sonic games had natural co-op. It didn't... It's not exactly perfect, because, of course, you know, you get... You can't see your character off-screen, but despite what people think, and that's kind of the problem with people thinking about Sonic, Sonic had a lot of slower moments. Yeah. You know, a lot of moments where you're just platforming or fighting enemies. That's why co-op worked. Their emphasis on speed means they can't properly introduce co-op. Yeah. I mean, weirdly enough, the one other Sonic game which did introduce co-op, and honestly, I'd say it's the funnest part of it, was Sonic 2006. My favourite part of Sonic 2006 was playing as Silver. Yeah, but, I mean, that kind of helps given the game was supposed to be Silver's game. Yeah, it would have been fine if they'd have made it a, a game on Silver mm. and focused on, like, just Silver's campaign added, like, actual stuff into it and all that jazz. But there's, there's a lot of series which end up like that. Um, Bomberman Heroes, the Bomberman 64 game I haven't played, um, is more of a platformer. Like, they did the weird thing of Bomberman of giving him a jump button, whereas Bomberman 64 is kind of kind of like uh, how Mrs. Pac-Man is an evolution of the maze concept, how that would work, and Pac-Man World's a platformer. Bomb Man Heroes is the platformer, you know, changing the genre, whereas... Is that the one that Man 64 is... Nitro Ride talked about. Yeah, recently, Bomb Man Heroes, yeah. yeah. Well, Bomb Man Heroes was originally supposed to be Bonk 64. It oh. wasn't supposed to be a Bomb Man game, it was being made as a Bonk game. What a... bizarre turn of events. Mm. We could have done with the N64 having a boss battle against Blue Balls! I would have fought Blue Balls. <laughs> Oh, Bonk is... I can't believe Bonk was a mascot. He's just completely insane. I can't believe Bonk was. <laughs> it's like if Sega had Toe Jam and Earl as their mascots. It's just like... Just complete insanity. It's a, sh oh, it's a, yeah, it's a shame that PC Engine screwed everything up. Well, NES, Nex, it's NEC, Nick, screwed everything up with trying to follow on from the Tobo graphics slash PC Engine. So yeah. what is your uh, so what is your thirty two bit console mostly known for hentai? What? Basically, it's just uses the hentai machine nowadays. I mean, I can respect that. Really good at porn. Yeah, well, uh, we can uh, we can make a successful console without relying on all our mascot characters and the Hudson IPs. So how are you going to do that? Porn. I mean, if it works, it works. <laughs> Also, I just realised how long we've been recording. Oh, yes. Um, um, so, I was going to actually finish at the 20 minute mark, but you started talking about Sonic Advance, so it'd be good. Yeah. Yeah, I just like Sonic Advance. Mm. And so I think it should be talked about more. Mm. So, well, that's actually the next video is by Geek Critique, so I'm looking forward to when those pop up. Oh, cool. Cheers, everyone! Bye.